so that's why I was such fans because I honestly could say I saw y'all put the work in. Some people, I just be like, man, I be questioning their work up. I'm like, do you really deserve to be yeah. where you are? But for you two, I knew what it took. I saw the grind. I saw the grit. I saw the sacrifice. <laughs> Y'all know we at, we at Legacy Sessions. We right here at True Talks. And man, you know, we don't do no editing. We don't do none of that. You know what I mean? We just in the building. You know what I mean? And we get here, everything you say, it will come out. We are not editing shit out. It's going to be the truth. That's why we call it True Talks. But guess what, man? We got some great people in the building today. People I've always respected. People journeys I've always followed. And I'm actually honored that y'all took the time to just come rock with me today and have this conversation. I'm super excited, man. We got the L Boogie in the building. Yeah, yeah. And the Jag, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I ain't going to even sit here and hold y'all because, you know what, I'm super happy. I just got off the road from Pittsburgh Pro, so I was definitely, like, bobbing and weaving, trying to make sure I get here on time. So, the glad to know that y'all made it. Yes. Thank you for coming in from North Carolina. Thank you for coming in all the way from Maryland because it is a hump <laughs> to get into D.C. Gosh. But... Man, we got to get into y'all life, man, because y'all not living the way y'all was living when no. I knew y'all in the beginning. You know what I mean? So whoever wants to go first, first of all, I just want to know how y'all even got into bodybuilding. Like, how we get there? Like, what was the the moment where you was like, I'm going to take this shift and I'm going to go to bodybuilding? Let's start with the legend. Okay, all right. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, you was... <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Every time I turn around, it was Olympian qualified. You know what I mean? So... I'm on board with that. That's what's, what's, okay. what's good. So my bodybuilding journey, but well, my journey into fitness doesn't have a profound story behind it. Okay? That's your opinion, but okay. You really just want to look cute. You know I'm West Indian, right? All right. You know I'm from Trinidad. I do know that. You know how we love carnival? Yes, we do. Okay. So I wanted to look cute in my carnival costumes. Okay. And so that's how my journey into fitness started. Okay. Right? And... When I've been constantly going to the gym, you know, seeing these ladies in the magazines, these competitors in the magazines, like the little fitness who's magazine, I was like, they look kind of good, you know, and I kind of wanted to explore that route. Okay. And so I kind of just started to dig around and ask questions to people like, you know, do you compete? You know, what does it take? That type of thing. And I just didn't have the guidance. Eventually, I ran into someone in the gym and it's like, oh, I know a girl who competes. Okay. And then she introduced me to her coach. Okay. And then from there, that's where it started. It's history. That's, that's the history in the making mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm, that's so it. we went from, I just want to look good naked. <laughs> so that's all Carnival is. Come on, man. <laughs> that's what Carnival is. And for all y'all that don't know, I'm going to tell y'all right now, because I've been watching it the whole the whole spring. Listen. She been on the move, yeah. right? So <laughs> she was in Trinidad. She left Trinidad. She went to Jamaica. And I was for it. Like, I'm here to tell y'all, every time she posted it, I was liking it, double tapping it, hearting it, I was firing it. I was every emoji you could think of. I found one for that particular situation. So, at least we know. Yo, but then again, you still had to look good for that. So, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And this is the slowed down version of me. Yeah. I used to hit mm. all the carnival. Like, I mean, but I'm just letting back. you know, you crushed it this year alone. Just, <laughs> you was out there. I'm now back. You know, I had to take a pause. You during, took a pause. Yeah, take a pause. Right, but I'm cool. back. You know? back. She's back. <laughs> so, what's, tell us yours. Oh, man. Um, So, 2010, I divorced. Okay. And I needed an outlet. And so I've always loved bodybuilding. So I, in my 30s, I was fascinated with bodybuilding. And I used to watch 
everything related to bodybuilding. And the funny thing, a lot like, you know, I saw women that were really into bodybuilding, but they look like they look like me. Okay. And I'm like, we need to like it needs to be some of us doing this. Okay. And so fast forward, 30s got crazy. By the time I was 40, I was um, divorced with three girls. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Like I needed an outlet. And I always love fitness. I always love training. And so I thought for the first six months, I'm going to just go in the gym and train myself. And I figured if I did that, if I ever found a trainer, then I would be good. So it was a divorce that got me there because I needed to, like, I needed something to purposeful. Okay. Yeah, for myself. I needed something purposeful. I needed something where I could get rid of the negative energy that was around me. And I needed something for just me so I could figure me out. Um, and I love the gym. So that's where I started. And interestingly enough, for the first six months, I was in the gym working out and I didn't know coaches. I didn't know anybody that knew bodybuilding. And here was the one thing that this happened. And I knew that this was the path for me. There was a a manager at one of the gyms. I don't even remember his name. One okay. day I walked up to him and I'm like, hey, do you know anybody or any coaches I'm interested in bodybuilding? He was like, I absolutely do. He connected me to two ladies that were um, coaches. And about a week later, I went back to thank him and he wasn't there. Like he was gone. Oh. I don't remember his name. Nobody could tell me where he went. Like it was almost like that guardian angel right, that like was, it like, was like, yeah, it was, it was definitely, it just worked out like that. And I started, um, I started late though. I came in the game at 38. And I was competing against a lot of young girls, but you know, it's crushing. <laughs> listen, I came in with with a purpose. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I so I'm gonna tell y'all what I saw from afar. So I'm gonna tell you the era when I met y'all, so y'all can understand why I was so fascinated by y'all too. At the time, De Devin was living here. So when Devon was living here. Uh, I appreciated who she was as an athlete, but I didn't know her. She was already a pro and she already had like this aura where people just looked at her a certain type of way. Yeah. So I couldn't relate yet. Like, okay. And I was just getting into yeah. who I was as a bodybuilder and a coach. So knowing her, it was almost like this surreal moment. Like, Oh, that's her. And, you know, like, you kind of, like, speak and wave, but you don't really have no conversation with her, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all of a sudden, I'll never forget this day. I come out there to uh, see what the gym looked like, and you walk in. And I'm like, what in the hell? <laughs> I was like, yo, she look like she have fun doing this so at this moment i immediately shifted gears and i'm like yo i want to know who that is so i start asking around everybody of course everybody at this gym know who you are but they wondering like why i'm so fascinated and i'm like because i ain't never seen you before mm -hmm. and i love the body so where people go to bodybuilding shows and like looking for like who's gonna compete I don't care nothing about that. I care about what you look like. Okay. So I knew when I saw you, you was a problem. I was like, oh, oh my God. Whatever show she doing, I need to be there so I can just figure it out. So that's where I resonated with you. Why I resonated with you, Jag, is because I used to just watch her work and it inspired me. Like, she hollering, she screaming. <laughs> you know, I said that. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't never been in no gym and heard women scream like this before. <laughs> like, I done heard, you know, us grunt, or whatever the case may be. But she giving the same energy, <laughs> which means I'm like, I done got to the point where I'm like, y'all done crossed the gym like, yeah, you go. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, I remember that. So, for me... It was almost like me and her was walking the journey together because yeah. I was trying to figure out how to go pro myself. So it was like it was almost that internal key for me to be like push her to see her get where she got to go. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know your purpose. I didn't know none of your you story till you just told me just now. But those were the two things that attracted me to y'all. Right. 
So I remember the first time you you qualified for the Olympia. Like, I screamed. I was like, oh, like, I couldn't wait. I was just like. We all did. <laughs> so I'm like sitting there thinking to myself, like, this is crazy. Like, I watched this young lady do this. Mm -hmm. But I also remember when you went pro. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's why I was such fans. Because I honestly could say I saw y'all put the work in. Like, some people, I just be like, man, I be questioning their work. Up. I'm like, oh. I'm like, do you really deserve to be yeah, where you are? Absolutely. But for you two, I knew what it took. Um, I saw the grind. I saw the grit. I saw the sacrifices. You know what I mean? From what I could see, even just from the gym aspect, it was a lot. Which means it also helped me as a coach. Because it taught me right away what to coach and what not to coach. So therefore, even though y'all belong to my homeboy, I rooted for y'all because I knew what it meant. Not only for him, but I knew what it meant for y'all because I seen y'all do it. Mm -hmm. Which gets me to... I'm just going to say it the way I'm thinking. How the hell y'all walk away? Ooh. Like, how? Like... <laughs> Like, so I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to ask you this question first because, again, I'm shocked, right? Where I just want to let y'all know, she qualified for the Olympia every year. Like, it was just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, every, every, year. <laughs> every year that I see, every year, every year that I watch from the time I've been watching you. You are the Can I love you for that? <laughs> you are the ultimate hype, hype man. Yes. Look, I'll yes. take it. Yes. <laughs> Listen to y'all. I'm going to tell y'all again. From the time I've been following her journey, she has made it to the Olympia. So therefore, I've only known you for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a big deal. And it ain't like you went one year to the Olympia, took a year off because you didn't make it. No. What? I did. So, I don't know that story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm only going by my story. Okay. Okay. The story that I know we you stop. qualified back to back. I remember, and I can tell you to show you. I'll stick to that one. That's from the story I know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't even know how long you was a pro. Yeah. Oh. So that's what I'm saying. Like, okay. I don't know your 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 NPC journey. I don't know uh -huh. that journey. Okay. I don't okay. know what it took for you to become a pro. I don't know when you went pro, which means I couldn't even tell you what show you went pro at. Mm -hmm. I can only tell you from the time I met you what you've done, and that's your body of work for me. Mm -hmm. Fair. Which means your journey is clearly bigger. Yeah. But I got to look at it in the snapshot that I have. Right. Which means for me, if and and I'm not saying that I'm the the fucking voice of bodybuilding, but my whole thing is if I could see you in that snapshot, I know what you're capable of. Mm. And you did it back to back years at this particular point in time, which let me know you were somebody that the judges said to themselves, this is a person that deserves to go to the Olympia. Because it's not like everybody gets the ticket. Right. So right. that's what I know. And I also know you went to the Olympia one year when it was not a point system. So therefore, that means you had to win to get in. So at the end of the day, you still one of the top competitors in the world at that moment because you had to win a show to get there. So I still want to ask the same question. How the hell you just stop? Whew. You know what? I accomplished everything I wanted to. Okay. Right? Um, I remember when I started, I Okay, so rewind. I started, I turned pro in 2016, okay. right? And in my head, I said, I'm giving myself two years to make it to the Olympia because I didn't want to be that person chasing the stage forever. Okay, cool. I just didn't want that to be my journey. All right. No it's disrespect to anybody who, you know. I don't think it's disrespect. Stage. I think you just said goes for yourself that were for you. Right. And so I said, two years, I want to hit that stage. In 2015 was the first time I attended Olympia to see um, one of my friends, Diane Brown, compete. And I remember when I saw her on stage, let me tell you, those lights on that stage, I was like, I'm going to walk on that stage. Like, that was my motivation. I'm like, I'm going to walk on that stage. 2016, I did a show and I won that show, okay. which qualified me for the 2017 Olympia. Okay. It was at after the yeah, I get it. Right. Period. So went to the Olympia, did my thing. I went 
My other goal was to do the honor. The year after that, I got the invite to the honor. Okay. Those were my goals. I wanted to get to the Olympia and I wanted to get to the honor. I just want to let everybody know how hard it is to get into Arnold. As she's <laughs> as she's acting like I'm yeah. just a hype man, you don't get there by accident. They are very strategic of who can come and who can't come because they get yes. very, very wild on who they send the invitation to. But go ahead, continue your story. Just want to make sure the world knows that part. <laughs> yes, no, the, inv- the honor was inv- invite only at right. the time for it my still category. Is. Okay. I just want to let you know it ain't changed. So if those are my goals. Back. I had one more goal. I wanted to do an international honor. Okay. Right? And that was one of my other goals that I was trying to go for. But at that point, I was like, I did the Olympia. I did the honor. I did the Olympia again. I was like, I'm happy. There's nowhere else I want to go. I wasn't striving to get that Miss Olympia title. I was happy. I did it within... From the first time I stepped on stage, the last one was eight years. Right? Okay. Um, from the time I went pro to, and probably like four years, okay. I think. But it was like, I was content. It took up like, I started relatively late, not as late as you did, but it took up most of my 30s. Okay, cool. Right? And at that point, I was like, I know I sacrificed some things when it comes to like mm-hmm. traveling, mm-hmm hanging out with my friends, my family, that type of thing. Okay. And I wanted to do other things. You I wanted to start a family. I wanted to do other things right. in my life. And I knew I couldn't put 100% into bodybuilding if I decided to do those okay. other things. So to me at that point in time, it was like, okay, you did everything you wanted to do on this side. You know, mm. let's close that chapter. Let's do something else. <laughs> and so that was it for me. So it was an easy decision. Now, granted, I wanted to do one more show. COVID hit. COVID hit. Yeah, COVID hit. And that threw me off. I didn't like my last show, which was the, I did the 2019 Olympia. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like, you know, my presentation in that show. I didn't like my package. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of like have a redo. Redeem yourself. Yeah. Exactly. And so 2020 would have been that year. And then COVID hit. And so with the back and forth, with shows getting canceled. Yada, yada, yada. It was a headache. I sure. was like, you know what? This is it. And cool. so I backed it up. And so that was it for me. But I was very content. I was, you know, most people, I think people said I tried to retire before. I, 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 I don't, <laughs> I don't well, recall so you didn't even that. Those, I don't yeah, recall right? that. You know, you have but, some people that can, you know, document some things now. But that year, I knew when I hung it up, I, I was, was done. done. I was done. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I guess... Why that's interesting to me is I've always told everybody I've never been to the Olympia ever. Mm. I've never, other than watching on TV, like streaming it, I've never been. Really? Never been. You want to know why? Why? I'll tell you why. I said either I'm going to have a client there or I'm going to compete in myself. That's the only way I'm going. I'm not going to be a fan. Okay. I'm not. Which means I've never been to the Arnold either. Okay. Wow. Which means the only way that Arnold is going to get my face is either as a client there or I'm competing. Okay. So therefore, I can relate to the the gold pr- presence of it all. But again, I'm still shocked that a person with your caliber of being a gen- of a of an athlete with the genetics can just say, "I'm content. I'm good." I walk away now. And I admit some of the things you said does make sense because I'm, we all competitors, we've been there. So we know the sacrifice of traveling, family, relationships. I'll be the first one to tell you I didn't destroy one. But, but I feel like that sacrifice that you were making was worth it because yeah. you at the top. It, it was, but it's like, I wasn't getting any younger, right? And I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with that, but I'm just saying, like, I just feel like there was a space where I'm just looking at the times when you went to the Olympia and I'm looking at who's going in that time and I'm just looking at where they are now and I'm just thinking about if you were still competing where you would be. Listen, I'd be doing the same thing. Sometimes <laughs> I like... <laughs> and no, that's I, just my job as a coach, right? Sometimes I look I, at and be like, Damn, I could have <laughs> do that shit. Right. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Which okay. means again, I just I'm just a realist when it comes to that. You know, <laughs> so but which I'm gonna put a pin in that because I gotta figure out your situation too, because I'm <laughs> lost too, because 
I'm going to tell you my reasons after you tell me why you got to your Hulk, but okay. how did you just... How did I stop? I'm just lost again because I watched you personally. We talked about mm-hmm. it. I got to go pro. This is the story. This is what we're going to do. And then it was... I remember looking at Facebook and I'm like, she is Charlotte. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. She's on Instagram <laughs> doing something totally different now. So, yes, what happened? Like, how do we just walk away? I, so we, it was a natural evolution for me. So I didn't, I never started into fitness really wanting to be long-term into bodybuilding. I wanted to compete one time at 40. Okay. My first show was when I was 40 years old. Fair. And I wanted to compete the one time. That was my goal. That's the only one I had. And when I did that show, I started with, um, I think it was um, OCB. I did two shows with them. I won second place both times. And there was something in me that said, you're never going to get second place again. Okay. And so at that point, I was like, all right. I don't want to do this for a lifetime, but genetically and mentally, I was built for it. Like I was built for it. I was a mom of three daughters. So a single mom at that, like I had a lot of obstacles probably against me, but I was determined to, you know what, I'm going to figure out what this looks like for my life. And if I don't do it, if I don't continue, then I'm going to regret that. And so when I started, I started with the mindset of I'm only going to compete once. After the second, second place win, I took about eight months off. And in 2015, I came back. And that was between 2014 and 2015. I was like, all right, I'm not going to get second place ever again. And something happened that was completely magical. And just everything lined up for me. I won six shows, first place back to back to get my pro card. And that was kind of unusual. Like if you ask people around, that was kind of an uh, unusual thing. Mm -hmm. But I still wasn't in my mind competing for winning. I was figuring out my life. Okay. Like I was really transitioning who I was internally. And it just manifested for me externally. Okay. I was good at it, but I still didn't think I was one of the greats. So let me tell you this. And Elle will tell you, stop it. I have a picture. I used to follow L, Candace, and um, Katrina. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of the three of them because in my mind, when I was just starting out, I was like, I got to be like these girls. Like, I have to be like them. For me, they were the epitome of what bodybuilding or figure looked like. They had the grace. They had the style. They had the bodies. And I'm like, these three again? Um, L, mm-hmm. Candace, mm-hmm. and Katrina Roundtree. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. I just want to make sure yeah. so when I ask this question after you finish. Okay, go ahead. So I was a fangirl of them. Okay. And so, you know, going into it, going and, and kind of getting to rock built and, and then being able to kind of partner with this lady, I was like, oh, this is dope. Right. <laughs> like, this is like super, super dope. But I remember um, talking to Lou when I first um, connected with Rockville. And my goal wasn't anything other than just doing masters. And he looked at me and he was like, why are you selling yourself short? Me too. And that was like piercing (laughs) to me. (laughs) I'm like, well, what do you mean? He was like, you have a talent for this that is like none other. And these are his words to me. And I remember. Uh, sitting in one of the the um, gyms on a bench and having this conversation, and that kind of then changed my mind about what I wanted to do. And from that point, I learned a lot more about building muscle and right. dieting, and like I became a beast in my own head. Like, but COVID hit. Now, before COVID hit, what I recognized for myself is when I started in fitness. I started with a purpose to really inspire women to get fit and to determine in their lives who they wanted to be and make that happen. When you are in bodybuilding the way we were Mm -hmm. um, with the team that we had, we were everybody knew us. And so we were pretty much kind of unstoppable. And my mindset started changing to me 
as opposed to remembering why I started. Which is normal. I yeah. mean, it's bodybuilding. Yes. It's a self-made, selfish, right. you, you, you sport. All so right. true. And so 2018 happened. Um, I did my pro debut and my memories just came up the other day. And I was like, I looked amazing. And it's sometimes hard to see how, am- don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to see how amazing you look until you look back at what you, and, and Elle could attest to that. It's really hard to see, but I look at those pictures and I'm like, wow. But I also knew that there was an end, not because I couldn't do it, but it was an end because I was shifting into other things. And so coaching and speaking and really inspiring women to live a life that is unstoppable for them is truly what I'm created for. And bodybuilding was that platform. Now. My plan was to do my last show in 2020. And when I tell you, and I will say it, baby, I look like a whole superhero in 2020. And then COVID hit. And I was like, all right, how am I going to rebound? Because 2020, for me, I was focused. I was going to Olympia in 2020. And I'd never had the, um, the desire to go to Olympia. I've been there. I've seen everything. It's beautiful. But I never had the desire to be on stage there. In 2020, it happened. And then COVID hit. And then after that, I had surgery. Okay. So, and I don't know if a lot of people know, I had a total left hip replacement. I know about it. I don't know if everybody knows about it. And so at that point, it was like, all right, what's next for me? And let me move into what my real purpose is as it relates to bodybuilding. I miss the grind and the workouts and all of the stuff that we do. I don't necessarily miss the stage because the truth is I did more than I even expected to do. Like I did much more than I expected. I mean, I think that's the gratification of it all. I mean, for both of you, yeah. you know, it's when you, again, take this snapshot of why we here, you wanted to get, you wanted to look good for Carnival. You wanted to just shift your mindset from being divorced. Mm-hmm. And those things led to where you became. I'm just still tripping though cuz <laughs> i just know how many people compete and they will never be able to have y'all story mm-hmm. that's the reason why y'all here you know what i mean like i want to make sure y'all get y'all flowers before it's too late like somebody needs to recognize like and i look at our area and we produce pros like the dmv produce well, yeah. pros yes. we produce yeah. pros yes. like Absolutely. there's no hands down question Absolutely. about that which means I don't, I don't sugarcoat what your accomplishment is. But then we have elite pros. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, y'all in that conversation. And what I mean by that is, it's big when you can get on stage and personally know inside. Yeah. No one else can beat me. Yeah. Like, it's not a lot of competitors that know what that feels mm-hmm. like. Therefore, y'all were two of them, and it was like, hey, it was fun, y'all. See y'all later. Well, I don't know that it was, I don't know that it was that easy. I think, again, it's, it's an evolution, and it really depends on what your true purpose is. And for me, bodybuilding was never a long-term thing. I actually competed longer than I expected to. I competed for eight years. I started at 40. By 48 which was around COVID is Mm. when I had the surgery. So in that period, my entire life changed and I inspired people to change their lives. And that was the big thing for me. It wasn't so much about bodybuilding. And that's the crazy part is that people think when you get into bodybuilding, it's really just about bodybuilding. For me, it wasn't. You become an influence immediately. And I I mean, and I know that, you know, but it's just, and again, I mean, because I'm not going to like make sure that we like beat a dead horse, but... I would still say if any one of you today just decided like, hey, I'm going to get into it and come back, Mm -hmm. right? I'm still looking at the competition going, okay, cool. This is where they was at least staying, Mm -hmm. which means to me, genetically, muscle memory, whatever these things that people want to think or not think. No, what I can't take away is your body was designed for it. Mm-hmm. Like some people are just designed to be an athlete. Absolutely. And when you're an athlete, it's just hard to remove it. 
Which means this is why I respect y'all because y'all did walk away gracefully. Like y'all didn't do the toe the line and, you know, announce I'm about to do a prep and didn't do it or I, didn't do a show. You know what I mean? No. Y'all actually, y'all <laughs> There's actually. Some integrity in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So y'all actually just walked away. But walked away full. Like it no, wasn't. No, I can a, see that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. And the reason why, I mean, because that's what we're going to get into now. The reason why I know y'all walked away full. She went from bodybuilding to cycling uh, to yes. CrossFit, which means I know you an athlete yes. now because yes. you're showing the world yes. I'm, I can do whatever I want to do right. at a high rate. Right. And you ain't doing like some small cycling. You like out there. Yes. <laughs> 50 and 60 miles. Like I'm telling you, I didn't have your coach call me. He like, yo, I got a bike. <laughs> I said, well, I'm not buying one. So I respect the fact that you got one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you retire. <laughs> and he laughed and he said, what do you mean? I said, look, I said, man, you don't realize the type of athlete L is. I'm like, you know, cause you trained her and you know what her limits are, but you think you know how hard you done pushed her. I said, but what she's about to do now is going to be fun for her. Mm-hmm. Which means you ain't going to be able to keep up because it ain't going to be fun for you. Right. I said, next thing I know, I looked up and <laughs> now she in CrossFit. And now she... You forgot the swimming. Yes. This I, for a while. I, I was just to learn to swim. Okay, <laughs> I had to learn to swim. <laughs> I was just... But my whole thing is, yes. that's what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. With you, I think what you did, though, is even on the same playing field, but it was just a different type of glow. Mm-hmm. You went from bodybuilding and literally turned into a person that women literally desire to hear, be around at all times. Because I remember even thinking to myself at one time, like looking at some of your pictures from your photo shoot, like I posted it. Yes, you did. I was like, I think y'all yes, don't need to, y'all need to understand how old this young lady is yeah. because it's doable. Yes. And people were like, are you serious? I'm like, man, I'm not even lying to and you. Let's I know be her clear. Person. I am 51. Yeah. I'm very proud of that. Yeah, but I And do- listen, and can still give it to him. <laughs> See? See? Listen. See? There's no game. See? That's what I'm saying. Like, and, and I think that's what, what I, when again, like, I was like, man, this is crazy. But this is also how I know that timing is everything. I'm going to tell you how I know it's timing. I reached out to Elle and mm-hmm. was like, hey, come on the podcast. She like, sure. And we just shooting out a million and one dates. Guess what, though? None of them worked. Yep. And it didn't work because either I was moving, she was moving around, whatever the case may be, it just didn't work. Uh-huh. Reached out to you. Hey, this is what I got going on, but I'll be back at this particular point in time. Cool, don't worry about it. I'm going to make it work. Reached out to L. She goes, that day worked. Oh, I get two for one. Here we go right Perfect now, star. baby. Yeah. And that's what I mean by I agree with timing. Yeah. So... The first thing I want y'all to answer is when you look at the person that's going into bodybuilding now, knowing what you know, what do you tell that person? What do you tell a woman, not the man? What do you tell a woman? Like, how do you say yes or no? So I will preface this by saying I am so far removed from the bodybuilding world. So I will answer it in terms of someone who wants to compete in any sport and kind of get into it as a woman. Um, There is a level of focused commitment and consistency that anybody's going to need if you're talking about a sporting activity, Okay. period. And so research and really determine whether you're built for that and whether the timing in your life is right, because it takes sacrifice to be. And my thing is, if you're going to get into something, don't get into it mediocre. If you're going to get into it, get into it and be the best at it as you can. So I would really advocate to to really determine whether you have the determination, you have the commitment, you can, you know, become disciplined because it takes a level of discipline for any sport. Bodybuilding is a very unique sport that's going to take a lot of mental fitness. Like the entire sport itself is going to play on your mind. Um, And if you don't have the mindset to push through that, you're not going to succeed in bodybuilding. Like you're just not. 
Mm. You have to have the fortitude, the mental fortitude, um, because you have people comparing you to other people, people criticizing you. You have, you know, calorie deficits you go into and you know when you're hungry, you know, and then life is still life. Like we all still have to deal with life. And if you're not one to mentally be prepared or prepare yourself for that, you're not going to succeed. How are you feeling? No, I agree with her 100 percent. You have to have the mental fortitude to go into it. Number one, I also preach. Like in the world of bodybuilding, you have to what separates you from everybody else is that grit. Yes. If you don't have that grit, yes, you're just going to be forever mediocre. Right. Right. That grit to grind through those days where you're tired, you're walking like a zombie, like you have all these commitments and you can't, you know, you have to prioritize bodybuilding, your meals, your workouts, like that grit and mental fortitude is what I think takes you to the next level. And most people don't have they it. They don't have that. Right? So if it is you going into it and you don't know, you know you don't have that. Don't do it. Don't bother. Don't bother waste your time. You know what I mean? I just tell people now. And the reason why I'm at that point is I don't think it's fair to them. Mm-hmm. So one, I appreciated the way you answered the question because you're answering it from where you are now. Correct. And same with you. I still live in it. So I just tell the person, especially the woman, because, and if I'm wrong, again, the reason why I brought y'all here again today is because you're going to also give the the world insight on the feelings of it all. Mm -hmm. I feel like women are not only in a more emotional battle when it comes to bodybuilding, I also believe they feel physically challenged it comes to bodybuilding. So therefore, when you put those two forces together, depending on where, what kind of mindset they have, one of them you're going to shatter completely. And the one that I've learned that I've shattered the most when it comes to women is the mental fortitude. Like something breaks in them where they don't believe anything anymore. Like they don't believe you know- the... The win, the loss, the, it's like, it's almost like, I don't even care. It's like, it's nothing is possible. Mm-hmm. So. And I tell people like, you could train that, right? People feel like, okay, if I don't have it, I don't have it. No, you could train that. I tell people, just as how you pray to increase your faith, you mm-hmm. be it every day to, you know, stay clean, like listen to positive affirmations, yeah. listen to motivational talks. Like there are things you can do to build that confidence. Because I wouldn't lie, I went through a period where I kind of struggled with it. Okay. Right? Yeah, people say you could, but I didn't quite believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And over time, I kept on like feeding my mind certain videos, certain podcasts, audio, like daily. Okay. And I got to that place. Right? So I'm glad you you said that because I feel like that's the. But you can get it. I feel like that's the one thing. And the reason why I brought it up is because men come with pride. And ego. Ego. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all yeah, heard ego. it here first. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's two on one. And Frank not going to argue it, baby. How to put it nicely. Yeah, yeah right. you know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all come with ego, fellas. Y'all better cut that ego out. I mean, but Beyonce said it first. But yeah. true, they do. We do come with pride and ego. Yeah. This is a given. Which means... The only time the man crumbles when it, in the bodybuilding world is behind the closed door. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not bringing it with him. Mm-hmm. And that's why I ask, because when you communicate with women, you're empowering women mm-hmm. from your point of view. Mm-hmm. You're empowering women from your point of view, but y'all have two different ways of empowering at this point because this is your purpose and you're kind of just meeting people that are still in love with who you are and just watching you transform through different things. Yeah. So it's like, damn, how do you get to a place where you just like, like, yo, this is not for you, though. Like, this might not be for you. You as a coach saying that? Or no, the you. Person? The pre- it's not about me. Like, right. you too. Because I don't feel like I inspire women to compete. Okay. I feel like women come to me because they're like, yo, he a good coach. I don't feel like I aspire. I feel like when people look at me and listen to me, I done told you this a million times. They probably can't stand me. Mm-hmm. They're like, yo, he get on my nerves. He is super honest, this and all the things. And I'm just like, look, I just don't want you to waste your money. But I'd rather get you in the best shape of your life and you not think about competing at all because that's going to probably be a better fit for you. Which means, again, I'm just being a coach. 
I want to know from women, are y'all comfortable telling the other woman, even though you got to empower them, like, because you've been at the top. Gotcha. Like, hey, this ain't for you. Mm-hmm. Are y'all comfortable with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've had, and I think we can both agree, we've had those conversations with okay. people that we know competing. Um, I, and, and like to Elle's point, you really have to have the grit for this. And not every woman has the grit. I grew up and went through seasons and decades of low self-esteem. And a lot of people don't know that. No. And it took a lot for me to stand in a sport where you are completely judged. All the time. Completely judged. Everything you do, um, that is the nature of the sport. If you don't have the mental fortitude to stand against that, you're not going to make it. Whether you're a woman or a man. Now, women come with, I mean, we're already emotional creatures anyway. But there's something that I do believe you can teach a level of confidence. You can't teach grit, though. Like mm-hmm. you either, so either you got it, it or, or you don't. don't. OK, yeah. cool. Yeah. I agree you with that. You can't teach grit. Mm-hmm. And, that's not and, 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 and I agree with you a thousand percent. And I mean, that's why I was asking, because I feel like at this time in y'all lives, women are definitely still reminiscing of what they know of you. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's almost like I want to be a part of the circle because I know what she does. Which let's just just move into y'all lives now. Then, well, what are you doing right now to stay whole? Because mm-hmm. bodybuilding ain't it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what are you doing to stay whole? I mean, well, when I left bodybuilding, I realized I love being active. I love moving. I want. I love being an athlete. Right. So I kind of needed to fill that gap. And I would like to, now I could say I feel whole, but it took me a while to fill the gap that bodybuilding once took. Okay. It took me at least two years. Okay. Because I was so regimented. My life revolved around bodybuilding. Like for me to get out of that and like form a new new rhythm rhythm for myself, it took a while. Now it's. My community, right? So my friends, being able to be with my friends, my family, still being able to be active, do what I love. So that's when I crossed over to the cycling and the CrossFit. But like I count on my community now to kind of fill that gap. Okay, cool. So I spend a lot more time with family, friends, traveling, that type of thing that that keeps me. Keeps you whole. Okay, cool. What about you? Um, A lot like Elle said, I kind of moved out of the space. I moved out of the space, though, understanding that this was great and now I get to rise a little higher. So when I moved out of it, I was already practicing all of those things because that's what my coaching is all about. And so I was already I'm coming into a new space. Now, it took me a little while because you get used to the regimen of what you're doing. And when COVID hit. I didn't choose not to do it. It was just kind of taken from all of us. And so I had to wrap my head around that. I had to also wrap my head around having an injury and what that was like. But because of bodybuilding and because of the mental fortitude that I developed going through it, I like really was a smooth sailing through all of that. And I, it was just a natural evolution. Again, I'll keep saying that into what the purpose of all of this is. And it's really to be in the space that I am in now at the age that I am at to encourage and and motivate women to really just become everything. And part of that is moving your body. Like it's not just listening to podcasts or affirmations or eating like it's really moving your body and doing something that you truly enjoy. And it doesn't have to be bodybuilding. I mean, that's clear. And and that's where I'm at. Like when I say that's where I'm at, like trying to understand like how y'all think. like. Do you, do y'all feel like y'all still have body dysmorphia? Yes. You do? Absolutely. What about you? Not, not really. Okay, so we got a yes and a not really. Cool. (laughs) Hold on, hold that thought. Hold it, hold it. You got it. What it feel like? So this, and I was just talking about this the other day. When you go through bodybuilding, for me, and you are always in tip-top shape, And then you become 51 and, you know, life just this is who I am normally. 
when I'm looking at pictures, I have to remind myself like, yo, that space was for that time. (laughs) And it was for stage. Like, that's not normal life. You can't walk around looking like that. And so I had to really work with my mind to appreciate the body that I have. And it took me a little while because I wanted to be lean all the time. Like, when you gain 20 pounds, it's like, oh, my God. Now, baby. <laughs> oh, we see. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, we but, see. But it takes. I'm about to say, because if, if you got by this more of your week this, off. No, it takes me. And, and you have to understand, I spent decades battling with low self-esteem, anxiety, and depression. And so I'm always having to remind myself of how wonderful I look just as I am and how amazing I am just as I am with everything going on. So when I talk about body dysmorphia, I really mean it. And for me, it's not as severe as other people, but I always have to remind myself. And my daughters will catch me saying, oh, I got to lose weight a little bit. And they're like, mommy, you look amazing. And I'm like, you know what? I do. Yeah. For exactly where I am. Right. What about you? Well, I say not really is because it's not as bad mm-hmm. as it was before. Because, yes, that shit exists. Yeah. No, you can curse your ass up. I'll say it for her. That shit. That <laughs> I'll repeat it for existed. you. Okay? <laughs> like, tremendously. Like, it was. She we wanted to be a lady. <laughs> we, can, we can say that. You, can, you can say that. This is true talks, baby. It was <laughs> severe. Like, people would look at you and be like, oh, you look great. But, yes. You don't You're see right. it. And especially if after you see what you could look like. And then here's the yeah. thing to it. People see you on social media look a certain way. Right. So God forbid you walk out looking, not looking not that way. Looking. People don't realize, listen, that stage is literally for that day. That's the next day, you're not looking like that. Absolutely. I'm not disagreeing, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to keep being the voice. But, but that's, so I think that's, that that's y'all the here. thing. I think that's the thing. And she hit it on the nail, the nail on the head is people judge us by what they see on social, social media. media. Yes. And that is not our life for real. That is my I've been saying this for a long time, time, man. Social media is only for what people want you to see. Yes. Listen, that's it's so filtered. So, so filtered. People know their best angles. Yes. Right. They post so, their best pictures. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. My social media is probably the realest you're going to get it. Because I don't give a fuck what I put up there. And the reason why I say that is because my personal Instagram, I'm not trying to create an uh, uh, image for you. Right. But I do respect the people that do it because they either trying to make money from the situation, whatever the case may be. I ain't tripping. But go. But okay, social media is a highlight reel. So yes. I'm posting the highlights. Correct. I'm not posting when I, you know, looking yeah. like a buff. I'm posting the highlights when I win a show, I'm looking good. So that's what people run away with, right? right? That's what they, they do. In. And, so I, they and, see and they you can't now, help that. They now see you mm-hmm. walking the streets on a regular day and they be like, right. And so I so? want to get a, get away from that. I was having a conversation about really being unfiltered. And the fact that even on my page, people see the highlights. Yeah, I'm not And I'm trying to get away from that mm-hmm. to really let you see a real lit day in the life. Because that's just a moment in a day. Like I have another 25 hours in that day that I don't look like that. I don't feel like that. I don't want to be bothered. Mm-hmm. So we have to. But that's when your conscience is telling you not to pick up that phone. True. True. I mean, I'm just saying. Absolutely. I'm telling you what it is. Absolutely. And that's what I've gotten away from. So I am definitely at a point where my business page, I don't even run it. So I don't, when people reach out to me like, man, I love that post. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because and the reason being is because I paid somebody to make sure that it's ran a certain type of way because it's the brand. Mm-hmm. Right. My personal Instagram, I ha- when I remember to post, I do post. Mm-hmm. But I don't care what it is. And what I mean by that is I'm not looking for the perfect angle, the mm-hmm. perfect situation. Mm-hmm. Even if I just got something to say and it just popped up in my head, I'm just going to say it. Mm-hmm. But the- subconsciously, like, I may not, okay, that's what I post, right? It's not like I'm not trying to post the bad things. You just... Right. You just you no, know, that's what I'm saying. Right? That's, that's why I said what I said to her. But- I believe it's a space... When that's when your conscious tell you to not pick up the phone. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like I'm in this mood. Ugh, nobody yeah. else needs to know. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And my thing is, and that's why I also say, I what's making y'all full? Because you are now living 
as what the world says, the everyday walk of life. Yeah. Right? And the fact that you're living the everyday walk of life, I mean, I'm still impressed with y'all everyday walk of life, but I know the people that don't really know y'all's story, they kind of caught off guard. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they caught off guard, we're just going to use the two people that are sitting right here with us today. They look totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all used to look identical. Absolutely. Now y'all walks of lives look completely (laughs) separate. Yeah. You know, so therefore, for me, I'm even intrigued when I'm like, Hmm. Elle used to be super active on social media. Mm-hmm. I don't even know when the next time you're going to post. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so that's what I look at, right? Yeah, but I think that's... You, the- on the other hand, mm-hmm. you're pushing a certain yes. type of content yes. for us to know. Right. Right? But it's two types of content you're giving us. You're giving us the, hey, I'm healthy, mm-hmm. the wealth, you know, positivity. But you also giving us some um, fly, I'm sexy, yes. I'm going to show you a quad. Absolutely. I'm a, There's a lot of things going to happen, right? Yes. So I believe y'all both walking in y'all right light. Mm-hmm. But I also know women that's afraid to still say, how y'all get there? Because I know other bodybuilders, mm-hmm. you know, and the women that I know, I'm like, they're not going to just walk away from bodybuilding. They're going to they're gonna probably have a show. They're going to probably become a judge. They're going to probably, they're going to do something that's connected to bodybuilding because they need to still feel part of it. And I think that's okay. I mean, I think people have to decide for themselves what part bodybuilding or that lifestyle or any lifestyle is going to fit for them. Mm-hmm. For us, it was just a different... I just believe, again, y'all said it perfectly in the beginning. It was, y'all, it was time. It was yeah, time. It was time. Some people, but a lot of people's time has already right. came. <laughs> <laughs> y'all do roll. Y'all know where y'all at, right? Y'all know where y'all at, right? I'm just saying. So Some people's thing. time became... Just because you may think their time No, I know so. fans. <laughs> What we're not going to do on here is we're going to tell no lies. Oh, God. People's time has came. That That is true. And, it's and what I mean by hard. that, all I'm saying to you is I'm not even telling them, hey, walk away, because that ain't my decision, right? What I'm saying to you is find your other purpose. Mm-hmm. Right. And I feel like women like you two need to be on these platforms. Right. So that they can understand it's There's doable. More to, it, it, it is, it's doable. It is very doable. That's all I'm saying. It is very doable. I feel like yeah. I struck the do because my whole thing is I men are going to go to the if you are a dude and you always been a gym rat, you just going. Mm-hmm. Like even me, I, I told somebody yesterday, I'm like, man, when I turn 50, I've been regimented it for so long. Absolutely. Yeah. We in the when gym. I turn 50, I'm still going to be in the gym. I'm just going to hit the gym different. different I'm just right. going to eat That's different. It. I'm just going to, I'm going to skip it. that meal over there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know I mean but, but it's not to minimize. It, it's, it can be a struggle. Because I wouldn't lie, it took me a while. But that's the reason why, that's the reason why I can. I'm saying to you too, tell them it, it's but okay. it can be done. It's yeah. okay it to is struggle. Okay. It's yes. okay if you Because struggle. they don't even want to struggle. Yeah, it's okay They They struggle. looking for the, the, the result of what they believe took in place in bodybuilding to happen and, right now. And so people have to understand, these are the uncomfortable questions, the uncomfortable conversations that we have to have, especially as women, in terms of what transition looks like. Transition from what you were to something else is very hard. And a lot of people would rather not go through the uncomfortable space Mm -hmm. of figuring it out and stay where they are. So people who are still, and I I still see every once in a while, people that are still, you know, competing. My question to myself is, am I going to spend all that money to continue doing something that I'm not moving forward in and I'm not progressing in? And so that's a hard conversation to have with some people. Because of the, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm laughing. I'm going to tell you why I'm laughing. <laughs> People spending that kind of money and more mm-hmm. to go pro. Yeah. 
I mean, to each his own. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do Mm-mm. that. Mm-mm. Yeah. So again, this is what I mean by, and all, and I want, so fellas, I don't want y'all to think y'all safe. I just don't have no fellas on here, so I'm not going to make it about y'all. But today we're going to talk about the women because I want the women to understand that it's okay to be great at something else. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't Try want, I don't else. want anyone to believe that you stuck. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. That so when you, true. when you made that comment about, Hey, I still see people competing and are they going to still spend this money? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm not just talking about pro. Right. I'm talking about the women that's, that's been competing for 15 years, then then done 15 national shows. And I'm like, ma'am. Yep. It's okay. And I think it's okay. So for me at 51, I'm still in the gym at least five days a week. I just do the gym different. Like you said, I do it differently and I use it to further other things that I really want to do. And that's all I'm saying. Like, I just want to see people be great, period. I don't care what your greatness looks mm-hmm. like. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. No, I but when I see y'all, I'm like, damn, like with somebody, please just put a post up like hey if you're struggling with right. like it's okay it is. or if you're looking to transition anything yes it's okay well, right? because when mind. i put it up it's gonna be they're gonna think i want their business yeah no and i'm I, like no it's not I'm, I'm not saying this because i want your business i'm saying these things because i know you think about it right. you just not gonna ask the question you're not gonna figure out who's done it and who else to reach out to, to talk to. You don't even know what community to go into. But here's the other thing is people develop. And just like in any industry, whether it's business or bodybuilding, people develop an identity and it's hard to change that. Yeah, It's hard to change that. I'm not disagreeing. I believe when I walk away from this completely, mm-hmm. I believe my struggle is going to probably be given direction. It's going to be like the person... Like, even now, I find myself in the gym somewhere randomly where I've traveled and somebody do something wrong, and I'm like, nope, this ain't mine. I, mean, I do that too, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me, take this left over or this right over here. So, you know what I mean? So, I'm that person. But what I'm saying to you, so I think those are going to be the things that I struggle with. But when I look at everything is a different level of greatness. So... And everything also has things that you can't be great at. So if a woman is struggling with, and I also glad that you told your story. You say, hey, I was going through a divorce. Hey, I was just trying to look good, period. Again, two different reasons to getting into this, which means if it don't work, it's still okay because this won't my purpose. Correct. Mm-hmm. Which means I believe it's a lot of people that does it for those same exact reasons. Like I just wanted to, and somebody told me my genetics or somebody told me I could possibly do it. And now they stuck Mm -hmm. because they're not getting to the Olympia. They didn't get to the pro card. So it's like, okay. Like this is all you have. It's not all you have. Like it's not. And they like, well, this is my friends. These are my only people to talk to. And I'm like, they not. That you didn't even know these people before you came into this industry. Mm -hmm. So just imagine if you moved on to what you think fits you for real. I went through that. Like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to hear. Because when I stopped bodybuilding, I stopped, like, I have not been in a global gym since like a year and a half. Right. I have not been in a regular gym Mm -hmm. and I didn't know life outside of a gym. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do? Where do I go? Like I needed, I had a community at the Mm -hmm. gym also. Yes. And so when I decided not to go back, I knew I was losing that community and it was, it was disheartening. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. Like, where do I go now? Right. Right. So the key for me was finding another community to join that allowed me to explore different things. And it's okay. You know, I've been with these people for how many years, Mm -hmm. but it's okay to find other people and other things. You may find something else you're good at, Mm -hmm. right? It it will be uncomfortable at first. And that's normal. Right. Right. But you can do it. it. When you walked into this new, this the world of bodybuilding was uncomfortable. Yeah. You didn't know who who who, you didn't and that's all I want people to understand is like go back to day one. Like Mm -hmm. it was a space where you was uncomfortable with this as well. So 
it's going to happen again. Yeah. I think people just have to do that in their time also. Mm-hmm. It, it just has to be their time to kind of figure that out. Um, and even if we tell someone that, hey, the, they can't hear it because be it's ready. not their time to figure that out. Y'all was also blessed, though. I'm going to tell you how I know. Y'all had a coach that understood. Yeah. Because the other side of that is the coaches that don't. Right. They I also trapping them. They also trapping them. They going, no, not yet. We're so close. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm-mm. I think that also helped because if someone understands to say goodbye with you, it, it's also, it, it feels different. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that he didn't say, you still got a left in the tank. <laughs> I would have said that. Yes, we. I hear that. <laughs> yeah, I would have said that. I'm being honest with both of you. But that's still true. Right. If you come to me. It's still very true. And go, hey, yes. I'm dying. Sure. Right. You still got some shit in the tank. So here's the thing. The truth is we do. We still have stuff in the tank. Right. We definitely do. But the question was, am I able as a coach to understand that the time has ran its course? Yeah, right. And that's what I mean by yeah. being blessed. Yeah. He did not put that added pressure Correct. to the point where Correct. you felt like absolutely I'm really about to make a mistake. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's different. Yeah. And I feel like on the other side of that is the, we'll just say not so grateful coach. Is also doing, Mm -hmm. we close, we right there. We like, we like one point away from, and I'm like, no, that person came in third every time. How did you get there? You know, so those are things that I'm saying also are trapping the individual. Yeah, I think the onus is always going to be on the person to make that decision. Whether the coach says it, doesn't say it, you like, and think about in life and things that you've transitioned to. And we can talk about bad relationships. Yeah, we can talk about things. jobs. You have to get to the point where you yourself recognize, no matter what anybody says, I need to transition in or out. Doesn't even matter, but I need to make a move. And until that happens, you're not going to do it. Oh, that brings up a great question because you said relationships. Oh, God. Okay. Does relationships exist healthy? In bodybuilding, meaning the boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, do they really exist? I don't know. I never had one, so I, <laughs> I can't yeah. answer that. I, don't know. I can't answer that either. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to go on the record and say no. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to go on the record and say no, and here's the reasons why I'm going to say no. Again, y'all was at the top, so you know what that tells me? There was really no time to think about it. I ain't say you ain't want it. Right. I ain't say you ain't desire it. I definitely Let's didn't make have sure we, time. You say that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a selfish sport. But it you varies. did not have time to be heard. So here's here's the thing. You don't make the time. For me. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. It's just not time. People make, make the time focus, for what they want to make right. time for. It's the focus of what I wanted to do at that time. And so once I get that question over, all the time. Yeah. Once Every time I meet. A go woman, ahead. she goes, is my relationship going to hurt because of this? It depends on who you're de- with. Yeah, it depends. Because okay. with someone who really understands, and it, it may be even a competitor who been through the journey. And so they know what it takes and so they know when to give you the room, when to, you know, put a little bit more pressure on. So it depends, it depends. on who you're with. And again, I'm not disagreeing because <laughs> I'm not here to disagree or agree. So. You're just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> okay. I'm just asking questions because, again, I just want to know it from the female's perspective. Because if you want to know mine, I'm here to tell you. It's rough. Well, and so- I go a step further. I was married. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I literally, the year I went pro, I brought my whole house down. Mm-hmm. I brought it down. To, I burned it down to the ground. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I did was because I didn't see nothing outside of where I was going. Yeah. Like, I didn't see anything. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, as I call it, when I came out of the hole and I came back to the foundation of the ground, I was like, damn, I messed this joint up. Like, I just, I destroyed this. Mm-hmm. And if somebody would have asked me during the time that I think I called it any harm, I would have told them no. 
So I think so we're, you're mentioning that in bodybuilding, but I think that's a global conversation just about relationships. I don't think yeah. it has to do. Yeah. You can find somebody who is in college and needs to get their master's degree and they're in a relationship and they're grinding, trying to get that done or their doctorate and have a partner that's not supportive. I think to Elle's point, it really just depends on who you are connected with and what those conversations are and how well you guys um, kind of track walk that line together because I, I don't, don't think, think it's just bodybuilding college, and I mean it could be business it could be anything that one person is focused on completely mm-hmm. they're going to require the assistance and the support of that other individual if that other individual is not supportive then that's going to be a rocky foundation great I'm glad y'all said it because that's the way y'all feel as women today here you go <laughs> so to the man that was dating you while you was a jag, okay, and while you were ill, what is this guy doing? So, I spent my time not in a relationship. I know that. My question is, what would the guy? Uh, what would he be doing? What would he be doing? We're talking about this theoretical, theoretical person, person okay. that we know don't <laughs> what exist. What would he be doing? Mm-hmm. Um, he don't exist, but I just want to talk about him. You really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he don't exist. I'm just, I'm, I'm a man. I'm just waiting for you to I, tell me I how to be this perfect guy. I mean, he's cooking I, my food. He's oh, my okay. We'll go I'm over here for it. Because I'm, <laughs> you're asking me to go back eight years no, just um, and I'm, figure out what that guy is doing. Oh, no, 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 I'm saying, because you said support, right? Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I believe if your woman is in college going for her master's, I'm not saying it doesn't require a lot of time and attention. I'm not disagreeing with that. But I believe the the normal human being can support that. I'm not saying there ain't some trashy dudes out here. I'm talking about the guy that makes sense to the world, has a reasonable brain, all the things. Mm -hmm. He can make that make sense. Let's say your job requires you to travel or whatever the case may be. He signed up for it and he understands this is where she has to do and the makeup of her world. Again, I believe there's a man to support that. I am looking for the guy because I haven't found the female yet, but I'm looking for the guy that supports the woman Mm -hmm. in bodybuilding to the magnitude that you say and understands how to support it because he don't live it. And even the bodybuilding that does live it, He's already selfish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. So therefore, that's going already going to be a train wreck ready to happen because he looking for support. Mm-hmm. So again, I and I because right now you jag, you ain't Latrice, right? So go back to jag because she's still in there. She rock. <laughs> no, I'm still jag. Yeah, the, Trust the, me. the blood boils. I'm I'm still right. What does that support look like? I believe it started with her. He cooking food. <laughs> what else he doing? He doing no, something. But he no, but I'm telling you, me. he's so. doing something inside of your prep that's probably outside of his norm. I, I hear what you're asking, but I'm still relating it to just relationships where somebody is focused. If you're building a business, that person's going to have to be supportive. They're going to have to have your back. They're going to have to cook your meals. They're going to have to you know, recognize that your focus for the XX amount of time is going to be to something else and not to you. There are going to be moments where, you know, you want to go out on a date and you can't because, okay, let's talk about bodybuilding. You're in prep and you can't eat. Like, I'm not support, disagreeing with you, Jack. I I'm think just, support. I just is don't just think is. I just don't. Th- I just think our sport. I'll say it for everybody. What I think. You think I think our sport to is so toxic. Mm-hmm. It don't allow it. And I would uh-huh. have to disagree because I, I feel you? like there are a lot of people who are in relationships, married or seeing each other oh, yeah. in bodybuilding that are successful. So look, I know a couple. Yeah. I know a couple. I ain't gonna say the couple name because I truly believe that. They probably one of the only couple, one one couple that I know that's doing it fairly well, right? But I believe the reason why they're doing it fairly well is because you met the person in that era of their life. So therefore, you couldn't move it, shake it, disrupt it, nothing. Mm -hmm. When I speak to the people out here, that's living 
that hasn't reached that totem pole yet? No, they're struggling and they're struggling at a high rate. And I believe the reason why they're struggling at a high rate is, and again, this is my opinion, Mm -hmm. is because whatever the support looks like for that individual in prep, and now speaking for man too, the person that they are dating has no capacity for it. They don't really know how to support it because it's so brand new. It's not supporting them from the school, the job, the business, the kids. I mean, because I look at a lot of different things that we deal with as humans that people adapt to very well. I'll give you some things to think about. If a man meets you right now, you got three children. Mm -hmm. Granted, they older, whatever the case may be, but guess what? Them your babies. So therefore, the man walks into a relationship and he understands I have to adapt to this. Mm-hmm. It's been done before a million times. Or if someone meets a man with, with, with kids, you know what I'm saying? You meet you and you and your, hey, I'm, I'm in my traveling phase. Cool. The man goes, either he can or he can't, but he figures out how to adapt. He meets you. You and yo, I'm loving the hell out me phase. Mm-hmm. You better do it too. He's going to adapt. He's going to figure out how that works because that's something he's seen or heard about before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bodybuilder is not as big as the world think it is. It's right there inside that device, which means if somebody don't look at the device and really see it, they have no idea what it is. And when they meet us, they go, you do what? Mm-hmm. You eat what? <laughs> you got to do how many days? How many times you got to go to the gym? Mm-hmm. You going to bed at what time? You getting up at what time? So you're talking about the couple that switch up on each other. Right. Not because that's one. what's it's happening. Just, because they don't, but, the support doesn't know how. So I, I'm, and I have to continue to say the same thing. I know the focus is bodybuilding, mm-hmm. but I think it's a relationship, just a general relationship issue where you have one person focused on one goal, no matter what the goal is, and the lack of support from the other person. I don't care what it is. Like you can be focused on building a lawn care business and you're out, you know, trying to get this business. Like all the clients, like I don't, I hear what you're saying. Bodybuilding is a very unique sport in which it requires a lot of sacrifice. But I don't think it requires any more sacrifice than any other really big sport. I really don't. And I guarantee we put a bunch of bodybuilders in this room. And they would disagree. Yeah. But if you put a bunch of basketball players or hockey players or baseball players, like everybody's going to have that same conversation. But so, again, this is where I agree with what you just said. The athlete. Yes. I that, agree with that. That, that is. I, I agree with that. But again, an athlete, if you look at the, the statistics of these athletes, what are relationships on? They destroy it. Some of them are. A lot of I, them are. I, I agree with Latrice. Um, oh, this is good. This is why y'all are here. No, because it really applies to everything. Yeah. Within relationships, people evolve and people change, people yes. grow. Okay. And you see that's where people, most relationships struggle. struggle. If the partner cannot evolve, Correct. change, and grow with them. Correct. Regardless of what it is, Correct. if it's a sport, I decided to, okay, start bodybuilding now. Or I decided to open up a new business. Like... When you met me, I was this person, but I've now evolved into this other person. And you, if you can't you gotta make meet that me there. leap, that's where the disconnect happens. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Yeah. It doesn't have to be bodybuilding. It could be anything. I know because we're so ingrained in bodybuilding, that's where we see it. But this is a global conversation. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to remove it. Yeah. I just wanted to just make sure that. I ask the right questions so that I can hear your perspective because, and it's just an opinion from me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I do agree that athletes struggle, period, with relationships because of what it requires the athlete to do. Yeah. I I definitely agree agree with that. I'm talking about whatever sport they play. So I agree with that. Yes. I just believe also with my opinion that it's a lot more structural balance for a person to meet somebody that lives the everyday walk of life and evolve with that person naturally based on the job, the school. And so here's the struggle with bodybuilding, where you're coming from. It's a selfish sport, not just in what you have to put into it, but what you get from it. Right. Like your partner is not 
right. getting receiving anything. They're not Correct. gaining anything from you going winning, on stage. Winning right. or losing. Exactly. Whereas if you become an entrepreneur, right. we, we both benefit. Right. We're both making money. Right. Body Berlin, you put you in it and you're the only person receiving something from it. I don't get anything other than, right. like, good job. Right. You know? So it's a little, yeah, it's a little more difficult, challenging there, I could see. But... No, and the reason why, again, this is why it's so great to hear y'all talk about it, because here's a great thing to it. Women can now say, I heard two women (laughs) say this is possible, which means instead of saying, hey, coach, can I Mm -hmm. go go put up the episode? Check it out. That's your plug. (laughs) (laughs) That's your plug. (laughs) They told y'all. You ain't got to ask me no more. You know what I mean? Because... This is what I'm on the phone battling with. Because, again, my truthful perspective is, hey, if your relationship ain't what you think it is, you about to find out. True. So the truth to that is anytime you change directions in any relationship, it's going to test the other person and you will find out what you have. So that is true, regardless to what it is. That is true. You're going to see like truly what this the substance of this is. I mean, that's all it is for me. Like, I just want to make sure the world know, like, if they don't hear, and I also think it's because we don't talk enough. So it's like, if they don't hear Mm -hmm. the other perspective, and if I leave it solely based on what I think, Mm -hmm. then it becomes the truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, let's ask some people that live it. Mm -hmm. First of all, lived it, live this way and do, how do they feel? Which means now, you know, no, this is this opinion, this perspective can be moved around based on these particulars. Now you can come up with your own idea and figure it out. I will say this, just kind of in true transparency. When I was in bodybuilding for those eight, nine years, I mentally understood that I wouldn't have the capacity to add anything else to my life because I had my children, I had church, and I had bodybuilding. So I couldn't in my head at somebody else because that was another thing that was going to take up my time. And these three things already took up my time. My switch changed when I walked away from bodybuilding because I said to myself, now I can figure out what a relationship is going to look like for me. So those are real conversations that people have to have within themselves to know if they even have the capacity to do it. Okay. Yeah. That was your story as well. I didn't have any relationships through it, but I had good role models of relationships. So okay. like um, my really good friend, Candace and Wellington, you know, I <laughs> yeah. shout them out like they're married. And I look at how Wellington supports her mm-hmm. on her journey. And I just be like, floored, like, yeah, okay, cool. that's what I would want, you know, in a partner. I'm pretty. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like, again, you still talking about, she the top of the food chain. She is. <laughs> she was one of my you know fans. I mean? yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the top of the food chain, you know? So, and I'm glad that you brought that up because again, you're right. I saw that too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I definitely know, I think where you are in your career plays a part on how it affects your relationship from that aspect. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad that y'all also said, hey, no, Frank, let's just look at relationships functionally. And if you put these components together, this is how it works. But I I ain't gonna lie, you know, we'll have to come back. It did help if I did talk to someone during that time, Mm -hmm. they were into fitness. Okay. So that helped. So they kind of had an understanding of what it was, what life was. So I didn't have to explain that to them or, you know, try to mold them into that's all I'm saying man I just want to make sure you know if they don't think Frank crazy you know yeah. I mean? well I mean you it's a little bit. Bit. especially if your partner can't take you getting all the limelight because also with that's bodybuilding that's the other part you if yeah. you're doing well looking good attention is on mm. you but so if again, they can't take that attention I'm just saying y'all then, said men got pride and ego I'm gonna say that I'm again that that stretches because that's with anything if one partner is getting the limelight for whatever it is the other partner has to be comfortable in their skin to be able to kind of ride that out Mm -hmm. there are times that men may have a little more angst about their woman 
being in the limelight like that mm-hmm. for whatever, not even bodybuilding, but just whatever. Especially when she hopped Did naked on stage. Did you just turn your back on, you know, <laughs> like, turn your back, sir? No, I didn't. So this, I mean, this I promise her. y'all I was going to make this like, <laughs> for the people that's going to pull this episode up, I promise you I came in here before I came in here. I said, man, I know this is going to be a good conversation. Maybe an hour and a half, hour, I'm going to get up out of here, right? But she said something that lets me know that dudes out here tripping. So again, I I, ain't, I don't understand the guy that you're talking about to do that. I mean... To me, that's not a man. Mm-hmm. Here's why I'm saying that. And if, again, if you disagree, let me know. Women are put on this earth to be seen. And what I mean by that is, y'all are beautiful. Mm-hmm. Listen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. That, go that ahead, part go right ahead. there. Y'all go are ahead. beautiful. Y'all are strong. Y'all, y'all are made to endure things that men are not made to endure. Very true. So therefore, when you look at a woman as a man, I'm, men, please hear me. There's supposed to be a pedestal that you immediately Put your woman on because for those reasons alone, which means if we walk it down the street and the whole street decides to stop and look at mine, by all means, take the pictures, the boat, keep walking. We, we good for me because now if you competing with your man for that, I'm confused. With Most men man good this without year. attention until they're not. Until they're not. And okay. this is, this is what I'm, this is again where I'm lost because. I feel like if you a man, and maybe it's my upbringing, who knows? It was made to get our hands dirty, be gritty, all the things, right? So I ain't got time to look in the mirror. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I don't look in the mirror. What I'm saying to you is that ain't my objective. Mm-hmm. Like, if me and you in the house right now, and you like, babe, I need to get in the bathroom to get ready, right? I'm not going to be like, but boo, I'm in here. Let me, no, go ahead, do your thing. Because I'm a man. I could just slip it on, do all the things, and I ain't got to do all the things you got to do. Mm-hmm. But if you got to be at home trying to figure out who won't share, <laughs> no, like... First of all, that's not what I said. <laughs> I'm just giving you all the things that I heard in that statement. I know that's what you heard. <laughs> because men do that. Yeah. You, why are you upset because your woman is getting the light that she's supposed to have because... Bruh, she beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's why you picked her. Mm -hmm. That's why you picked her. You did not pick her because you felt like this was the worst thing you ever seen in your life. So you picked her because you wanted the world when you first picked her to see her the way you saw her. So I think you have to have men on to ask them what that is. I don't know them. (laughs) I had one of them on here already and we didn't talk about that. So... You know, that was about the closest I was going to get. Yeah. But um, I agree. If I can't, hey, if you're out there and you you think <laughs> the way I think, or if you don't think the way I think and you want to tell me why you think the way you think, hit me up. I want you on here. But um, yeah, that's my problem because I don't understand why I don't want you to get all the, all the light. That ain't even my job as a man. They're good with it until they're not. She been through that too. So you, she, you can hear it in her soul. Like it's, no, it's, it's right that. here. It's right here. That. You ain't got to say it. You can hear it. You just said it to us twice. No. You like, no, mm. man, I had the same fucking problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, and then all of a sudden he flipped. <laughs> and that's what I don't get. Like you got to be more careful with this situation because bro, fall back. I think it requires consistent communication between the two people. I'm always going to kind of bring it back to what people in relationships can do for themselves. Um, I think both. I think the flip is the truth as well. There are some women who, you know, get uncomfortable when their man is out and getting all of this attention. So I think it comes back to what conversations are we having? And how can we make each other feel comfortable in these spaces? Because if you're too, out though. there doing your thing, it's going to happen. So how do we maneuver through that? How do we make sure we're solid? Because it's going to it's going to come up. So I don't think it's just men. I think I mentioned that just because, you know, I'm a girl. 
Um, but I think it's a combination of both. I think we can, women can do the same thing as well. But I think it's super easy for a man. And what I mean by that is if you're getting all the limelight, you just immediately pull your woman in. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's a quick fix. Mm-hmm. You put the light on her so it shines on her and why it shines on you. Like, babe, come share this with me. Well, but we can say the same in reverse for a woman who's in the light as well. And, I, and majority of the time, Majority of the time, I ain't talking about the women that's doing the most. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about these two mm-hmm. women, women like y'all. They're bringing their men. In. They bringing their men in. Like I couldn't imagine her. That clearly went through this. I couldn't imagine. Wow. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't imagine her. Because I already know. You don't say that too many times. But I was saying it like, man, what the fuck did it? <laughs> <laughs> the man, whoever she was dealing with. Uh-huh. She brought him in. Like, yo, I want you to meet my people. I want you to get the same attention that I'm getting. I want people to respect you, know who you are to me. That's just the type of person you you present yourself to me as. Mm-hmm. So, and so do you. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't imagine, which means it's going to be crazy to me when the man get upset. Like, what you upset with, bro? Like, she didn't gave you the whole platform. Like, you didn't met the friends. You done met the people that, that she already like, yo, that joint, he a little shaky, mm-hmm. but you know, he be around. You know what I mean? So you didn't gave him everything and you still walking around. Look, see, look. She, I know. I, I, boy. Yeah. I'm going to stay over here. You better. We might have to <laughs> move too. I'm going to stay over here. We might need a bucket of ice. We need a bucket of ice, people. <laughs> Only on True Talk does it come out the right way, baby. <laughs> nah, man, but look. Because I don't want her to get too hot. So we're going to move on. So, I just want to say this first and foremost, man. Thank y'all so much Absolutely. for giving me an opportunity to have this conversation with y'all. It's been truly a blessing. I don't think I could give y'all enough flowers either way to let y'all know what I saw as y'all as an athlete and what I saw as y'all as a people, as a person, because I just wouldn't be able to say that enough. I'm actually glad that y'all are living in a space where y'all are happy and mm-hmm. full and doing the things that y'all enjoy. And um, I do pray that you both find something, um, which I know you already working on. Matter of fact, you want to tell everybody what you're working on. So. Oh gosh. I am. So I am a coach. Um, I do mental fitness and physical fitness. Of course. Um, I also speak, um, to women 55 to 60 because we're in that menopausal age. So okay. we have a lot of conversations about what health and wellness looks like in that space. Um, so if you're struggling with anything, related to health, wellness, physical, and mental, um, hit me up. I am JAG on um, IG and Inspired Wellness by JAG on IG as well. There you go. We in the building. So hit her up. Make sure it happens. Do you have anything going on other than Carnival? <laughs> <laughs> and being fabulous. <laughs> right. And being super amazing. You know? No, I don't have any business to promote. I just live in my best life. Living your best life. You yeah. definitely doing that. I can agree to that. I can attest to it. And the, lock, the locks are locking. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you started that. Yeah, no. Yes, I'm See, in there. That's what Beautiful. I'm saying. That's how I know, man. I was around for a long time. But um, nah, man, so thank you again for awesome. giving us a plug on where you are and how to get in contact with you. Uh, thank you again for coming out and hanging out with me. Yeah, man. So just like that, people, y'all know where you at, man. Click the button, subscribe, make the comments, you know, let us know what you think. And other than that, man, we out. Peace. Ouch.